<laughs> that was um, a lot. Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel or welcome to my YouTube channel if it's your first time here. I am Sammy and this is Paint and Mystery. Basically, I do a painting while telling you about a mystery. Very easy to understand, I think. Yes, I am in my paint-stained old gown. The reason? Because I feel like it. Okay? It is extremely cold here in Kempton Park in South Africa this week. Like, it's cold. I'm not even going to lie. So, just for the sake of a YouTube video, I'm not going to get out of my warm, fuzzy, very old gown. This is part of my look. It's, it's a part of me. Okay? Anyway, today we will be talking about the Lindenberg baby kidnapping. Um, I'm going to be honest, I didn't know much about the story, but it was requested in the comment section of one of my videos. So, thank you for that. Thank you for your suggestion. Um, I fell down the rabbit hole pretty hard. And um, now you are going to as well. Let's jump into the video, shall we? So back in the day, this was dubbed as the crime of the century. Has to be good then. Um, there is some details in this story that might upset a few viewers. So I'm just telling you right off the bat. First of all, let's get into who was Charles Lindenberg. In 1927, in New York City, the world watched as Charles Lindenberg set out to become the first pilot to do a flight from the United States to Europe. Mm -hmm. Lindenberg chose to use a single engine plane and he also went without a parachute and a radio because he wanted more space for fuel. He was dubbed by the media as the flying fool, which, I mean, fair. No parachute. It's a choice, I guess. He set off and 34 hours later he landed in Paris with about 100,000 people waiting for him, cheering him on. And just like that, he became a sensation. But... Bye bye. And just like that, he becomes a sensation. American hero. There was even talks about um, running for president. And I'm like, I'm sorry, okay, I know this is a big deal. Especially in that time. Big deal. But what qualifications does he have to become president? Anyway, I digress. Now, as he returned from that flight, he's now a pretty big deal. He's doing talks all across the world and he's now an American hero. Um, at this time, he meets a lady. In 1927, on the 21st of December, he meets a lady named Anne Spencer Morrow. And they become a power couple. It's difficult to explain the amount of fame that these people had. It was like they were a back then uh, William and Kate, you know. Very famous. In 1930, on the 22nd of June, baby Lindy is born. Um, Charles Lindenberg. Junior. And I'll put in a picture for you guys, but he was bloody adorable, okay? He was a gorgeous baby. We have birds interrupting me. Very rude. Wah! Wah! Anyway, so the perfect little baby boy is born and they live happily ever after. Just kidding. On the 1st of March, 1932, um, Charles Lindenberg, his wife, the house workers, the baby, and the dog is all at home, relaxing, doing their thing. Well, I'm guessing the house workers wasn't relaxing, they were working, but you know what I'm saying. Um, everyone is on their merry way doing their thing and the baby is asleep upstairs. 10 p.m., the nurse goes into the nursery to check on the baby and... He's missing. No baby. She goes to the parents. She's like, have you seen the baby? They're like, no. No baby. And um, they go to check out the nursery. And Charles says, they, they stole our baby. I don't know who they are. But immediately he's like, they stole our baby. And hence began 
the crime of the century. Baby Lindley was kidnapped. Um, Charles then found a ransom note on the windowsill and within 30 minutes the police, the media, everyone is at the house. And thus began the search for the kidnapper and baby Lindy. Now I guess at this point the kidnapper sees the media frenzy and he thinks I can get more money out of this. In the original, um, what, what do you call it, the night, the ransom night, he asked for $50,000 and three days later the family received a letter saying he now wants $70,000 which in today's money is like a million dollars. Not peanuts is what I'm saying. Now at this point a retired school principal called Dr. John Kondo, um, he offers to help. He says he will gladly be an intermediary between the kidnappers and the family. He will be a middleman, a middle maniki. And the family and the kidnapper agrees. And Mr. Condor becomes middleman. You know? Now one month and like 12 ransom notes later, later, finally, Dr. Condor sets up a meeting with the kidnapper. The kidnapper asks to meet in a cemetery. They met in the cemeteries twice, hence the name Cemetery John. Because the kidnapper told Mr. Condor, Hi, I'm John. Cemetery John. I know the media is so clever. So, um, Mr. Condor goes, he meets John at the cemetery and he gives him the ransom money. And he's like, I don't know, but where's the baby? And then the kidnapper gives him a letter saying that the baby is in a boat near Martha's Vineyard, which sounds so fancy, Martha's Vineyard. Anyway, um, they search extensively. No boat is found. No baby. They gave the ransom money. Kidnapper is in the wind. No baby. I know it's terrible. Now this is the sad part. One year later, baby Lindy's decomposed body is found less than five miles away from their house. Turns out he died on the night that he was kidnapped. The initial reports indicate there was a wound on the head which indicated that he died from blunt force trauma. Poor little baby. It's sad. Now along with the family, a nation mourns because as I said, this, this family was a big deal. They loved this baby. So it was a very sad time in America. And um, there was quickly suspicions that this must have been an inside job for a few reasons. One of which is that the family never stayed at that house on Tuesday nights. Never. Unprecedented. Um, last minute they decided they're going to stay at that house for the evening because the baby had a cold. No one knew about this sudden change in a very strict routine. So. How did the kidnapper know that they're going to be at that house? How did the kidnapper know where the baby's room is? You know, there's questions. Now, at this point, the police questions Violet Sharp, who was a housekeeper for the Lindenbergs. And um, she's a little dodgy in interviews. And they quickly say they want to do a hearing with her and she must bring some things along. And then the day before the hearing, she commits suicide. Yep. And um, after she committed suicide, they did an extensive investigation about her movements on the evening and they determined that she wasn't involved. I have questions. On the 2nd of March 1932, J. Edgar Hoover, who was the FBI dude, you remember? Yeah. He vowed to give all resources of the FBI to help and apprehend this. Murderer, this fist like a person, you know. And they start the investigation. They study, like hand handwriting experts, studies the ransom notes, and they determine that the person who wrote these notes was of German descent, or is a German national. He's from Germany. Is what I'm trying to say, which is corroborated by Dr. Condor, who's who met with Cemetery John and said that he had a German accent, so adds up. 
Now, before they gave the ransom money, they did record the serial numbers. And there was also gold notes included in the ransom money, which was slowly being phased out by the U.S. Treasury or whatever. So it was very rare, the gold notes. They went around a lot. And like I said, they didn't have the serial numbers. But in that day, there wasn't like serial number flagging technology like we have now. So they just asked the public, to keep an eye out for certain serial numbers and they asked businesses, you know. And um, these gold notes started to pop up all over the show and they were tracking the, the kidnappers' movements through where they were flagged, you know. Then one day a man used a $10 like golden note thingy at the gas station and the gas station attendant person was a bit you know, he, he, he found it a bit sus because you don't see that note so often and he was like, I'm not going to take a false note and then I have to pay for it. So out of the suspicion, he wrote down the man's license number on the note to keep record of it. Alright, smart, very smart. And um, through that, they realized that this $10 gold note thing is one of the ransom notes. And with the car license number, they managed to track down a man. The registration number led them directly to a German carpenter named Bruno Richard. <laughs> Bruno Richard Altman. Altman. <laughs> you know? And um, not only did they find a lot of the money in his like yard and stuff. Also, they found that the ladder that was made, um, a piece of the wood came directly from Mr. Hopsman's like upstairs area, what do you call them? The ones that the overseas have. Do you know which one I'm talking about? The, um, not the basement, the other one that's upstairs. What is it called? Attic. Attic. So the wood boards in the attic um, was used to make the ladder, or a part of the ladder, at least. They found that Mr. Hauptmann's, 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 they found that his handwriting matches the handwriting in the ransom notes perfectly. Slam dunk, huh? Huh? So in 1935, Bruno was found guilty of the murder of the Lindenberg boy and he was executed a year later. Now you might ask, Sammy, why are we talking about this? Case closed. Slam dunk. Easy peasy, case closed. That's what I thought. But it's much like watching the news. You might watch the news on one station and think that you know what's going on. But then you put it on another station and they say something completely different. And the truth maybe lies somewhere in the middle. If I was to stop looking after just this one source, I would say, okay, that's all the information we need. But as it turns out, this source did not give all of the information. They left a few things out. Maybe by accident, but I have a couple of questions and so does the world. Let's get into some of the things that does not really add up. Before Charles married Anne, he first dated her older sister Elizabeth and then a few months in he promptly dumped her for the younger model. Not only that, but the youngest of the sisters, Constance, she received a letter threatening her saying, listen, we will kill you if you do not give us $50,000. Mm -hmm. And it was requested that it be put in a special box and left in a cemetery. Sound familiar? The people who made this threat was never found and it was forgotten about, it seems. It also seems that baby Charlie was born with a larger than normal head and there were symptoms of rickets, which is a illness from too little vitamin D 
and then there's like side effects and symptoms where your bones doesn't grow as fast or it's softer or something. I don't know, go Google it. I'm not here to teach you anything. <laughs> but there's been speculation since the very beginning that this baby boy had some sort of disability, something was was wrong with him and it speculated that Mr. Charlie, that's not his name, it was speculated that Charles wasn't too happy with this business because he's a strong American hero and his son must also be one, you know. Now getting into the night of the, um, the kidnapping, very strange, this family decided to stay at that home for the night, which they never do. They had a very strict routine and only last minute that they decide they're going to stay over because baby had a cold. So, how did the kidnappers know that they're going to be there if they are never there on Tuesday nights? Hmm? How? I, how? I'm asking you. Because um, the police asked this questions early on but then they just kind of left it alone. Also we learned that Charles had an engagement that evening where he had to appear at some sort of function and he never missed those. Okay he was very prompt and this specific night he just didn't show up and he didn't let them know that he's not going to be there. So that's odd and out of character why did he not show up to this event and then later that night his son gets kidnapped it's out of the ordinary when uh, the nurse saw that baby Lindy was missing she and Anne thought that Charles took the baby they were certain of it because just three weeks prior Charles did one of his hilarious practical jokes on Anne, his wife, where he pretended that their baby was kidnapped. Yes. And he made his wife search for the baby for I don't know how long before saying, Grappy, I actually just hid him in the closet. He hid the baby in the closet and made his wife think that their son was kidnapped three weeks prior. I mean, <laughs> Charles, you're so funny. Not only are you a yara, you're also hilarious. What the? How's that funny? If I, let me tell you, if I was married and had a baby and my husband did that, immediate divorce. Immediate divorce. How's that funny? Putting your baby in a closet and letting your wife think he's kidnapped. I'm sorry, this is weird. It's strange to me. I have questions. The other thing, it was raining that night and someone apparently climbed a ladder up and climbed into the baby's nursery, took up the baby, climbed down the ladder and managed to leave no mud prints, footprints and no fingerprints. And when I say no fingerprints, only the baby's fingerprints was found in the nursery. No mommy, no daddy, no nurse, no cleaners, just the baby's prints. How is that possible? Like there was many people going in and out of the nursery. Did the kidnapper come in and first wipe down the entire room except the babies? It makes no sense. I have questions. Also the fact that Charlie strictly instructed the nurse and his wife to put the baby to bed at 8 o'clock and not disturb him until 10 o'clock. According to him, he didn't want the baby to be coddled. The baby needed to be strong, strong man, like his dad. You know? It's just odd that in that specific time is when baby Lindy got kidnapped. The whole house is filled with people that are awake. Nobody heard anything. And why would someone enter the house and kidnap the baby while everyone is home and awake? Why wouldn't they do that during like the night? 
No one heard anything. Not even the dog is normally a barky one. Like woof woof, I heard something. Not that night. Mm -mm. He heard nothing. When they found out that baby Lindy was missing, the nurse and the mom immediately started to search for him. Uh, Charlie Lindenberg's first re reaction was, they took our baby. They stole our baby. And um, whilst the mom and the nurse was looking for the baby, Charlie, when he was alone in the nursery, found this ransom note, which everyone agrees that first ransom note was a little different to the rest. It looked like there was effort to, you know, hide the handwriting or that it was under coercion or I don't know, it was different than the rest. Another strange thing that I feel we need to talk about, okay, is that Charlie was, he inserted himself in the, into the investigation from the beginning. He took over the investigation, all right? He called the shots, he was in charge. He told some of the police officers that he would shoot them if they got in his way or went against his plans. Um, I don't know if it's standard procedure for the victim's father to investigate the case himself or to be in charge. He's not a police officer and he's involved in the case. Like, I don't know. Also threatening to shoot police officers. It sounds a bit unhinged is the word. Unhinged. Mm -hmm. Also the fact that Violet Sharp committed suicide to avoid talking to the police again and their answer was just she's not involved. They didn't, after Bruno was caught at it, they didn't investigate any further. They were like, we found our man. And they just forgot about all these things indicating that it, it had to be an inside job. Someone on the inside had to be involved. Because how did the kidnappers know they're going to be there that night? How did they know? where the baby's room was. How did they know which window's latch was broken? Because that's the one that they climbed into. Hmm? Hmm? Then, of course, Bruno always maintained his innocence. Even after a newspaper offered to give his wife a hundred thousand dollars if he confessed. And even after the governor offered to take death penalty off the table if he confesses, his response was, I have nothing to confess to. I'm innocent. And he maintained that until he was executed. Mr. Bruno's wife and a couple of other people also gave him an alibi and said he was like two hours away that evening picking up his wife from work. But, I mean, that was ignored. He said that his friend, another German guy named Isidore Fish, very fishy, he said that he left some of his belongings with him Bruno and asked him to take care of it while he takes a quick trip to Germany. He then bought a ticket, Isidore Fish bought a ticket with some of the ransom money and he went back to Germany. And in Germany he died before he came back. And then um, this boxes and stuff was still at, at Bruno's house and he went through it and he found this money. And according to him, Mr. Fish owed him $7,000 or something. And he thought, well, the guy's dead. He's not going to give it to me. So he took it the money. He hid it. He didn't tell his wife. And he used it. That is what he insisted happened. The police didn't, didn't, get, didn't investigate this any further. This Isidore Fish business. They were just like, we have our, our man. You know? One of the other things that really bothers me, like for reals bothers me, is when baby Lindy's body was found, he, the, it started to decompose and all that business. And the coroner couldn't identify him, but Charles Lindenberg immediately identified him, said his, that is his son, and he ordered that the boy get cremated immediately. This did not only take away 
the biggest piece of evidence, okay? It also, he didn't ask his wife, he didn't ask his wife, you know what, baby, lovey, sweetie, do you maybe want to bury our son or are we going to do a cremation or what do you want? He just ordered them to cremate the body immediately, which I find it odd, okay? I find it very strange. Initially, when the ransom money was paid, Lindenberg didn't want them to make record of the serial numbers. They ignored this request, thank goodness, but why wouldn't he want... He went against them at every turn. When the FBI wanted to um, give their resources, he turned them down. When they wanted to stake out the cemetery, when Dr. What's-His-Face met with the ransom dude, Lindenberg said, no, I don't want any police there. No, I'll shoot you if you come in my way. It feels like he was trying to obstruct the, the case, you know? And also during this um, trial that was for the murder of the baby, I didn't see any evidence of the f murder. There was links to the money and the ladder and the ransom notes, but the baby was cremated so quickly, I'm guessing no investigation could be done in terms of that. Also, what I wouldn't really call um, standard procedure, Charlie sat in the courtroom with the lawyers, like he was a part of this law team, and he's the victim's father, he's not supposed to be there, you know? But it's like he ran this case. It was his case, he was in charge. Mr. America. Now, the New Jersey governor was apparently also not happy that justice, in fact, had been served because he reopened the case and he said he doesn't believe that one man did this crime. And shortly after he reopened the case, Charlie took his wife on a freight boat in the middle of the night and they fled to England or something. It's odd, okay? Look, I know if you look at the um, books and the stuff, it would say the sky is cl closed. Mystery solved. I don't think so though. I think there's more to the story. Even if Bruno was involved, which it, the evidence does add up, but do not tell me he worked alone. There is no way, okay? He had no links to the family that we know of. He just happened to do this business while they were at home, which no one knew they were going to be there, except them and their house workers, all right? It was raining, no mud, muddy footprints. How are you going to climb down with the baby on a ladder? But now there's a couple of theories. Maybe the kidnapper um, dropped the baby by accident while climbing off the ladder, which is why he died that night. Maybe in one of Charlie's, why do I keep calling him Charlie? Maybe in one of Charles's hilarious practical jokes, maybe he accidentally killed the baby, you know, by putting him in a closet or dropping him because he was rough with the baby because he needed to be a strong man. Maybe he was so embarrassed that his baby, Mr. Yero's baby, had some medical issues that he just decided to kill him. Who knows? Maybe the person who committed suicide to avoid talking to the police. I don't know, maybe she knew something. There's more to the story, I'm telling you now. And I know I'm a bit of a conspiracy theorist. I see conspiracies everywhere, I'm aware. But there's just no way this adds up. One lone guy managed to pull this whole thing off. I don't think so. And the more we learn about Charles Lindenberg, the more questions I have, okay? He doesn't seem like a nice man. I don't want to be rude. And I know he's a hero. He flew across the seas. I don't buy it. No, there's still many questions and I think um, it will remain a bloody mystery.
That's what I think. It's long ago. I don't think we're going to find anything out. Especially given the fact that the case is solved, you know? So I guess it will remain a bloody mystery. Anyway, thank you for telling me about this case. Um, it bothered me immensely. <laughs> if there's any other stories you would like me to cover next week or the week after that or in the future, let me know down below. And um, also let me know what do you think happened to the Lindenberg baby. Do you think the case is solved and we are just looking for mysteries where there are none? Or do you think there's more to the story? We'll chat again next week and um, thank you for tuning in. Remember to subscribe. Bye-bye.